Great. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your patience. Uh, welcome to the July 21st, 2023 Licensing Committee meeting. Uh, my name is Wendy Strack, Chair of the Committee. And before we convene, I would like to remind everyone present that the Board is a consumer protection agency charged with administering and enforcing the Board's laws, where protection of the public is inconsistent with other interests sought to be promoted, the protection of the public shall be paramount. The meeting today is being conducted consistent with the provisions of Government Code Section 11133. I will announce when we are accepting public comment on the various issues and the meeting moderator will open the lines as appropriate. Each commenter will have two minutes to comment. Moderator, will you please provide the audience instructions on how they may participate during the meeting at the appropriate time? This is the moderator. When public comment is requested, the screen will display the instructions as you're seeing now. For public comment uh, using the Q&A box, just simply click on the question mark inside the square, typically located bottom right corner of your WebEx screen. And the text field that appears, type the word comment. Make sure it goes to ask all panelists before you click the send button. You can also raise your hand by clicking on the hand feature, the hand outline, which is typically bottom center of your WebEx screen. Or it could be located next to your name if you have the panelist list open, which is the icon of a uh, a person's head, shoulders with three lines on the side, locate your name and click on the hand raise that's next to your name. For those that are calling in, you can raise your virtual hand by pressing star three. And for all of those that did um, request public comment, for those logged in, when prompted, click the unmute me button prompt that will appear on your screen. And for those that called in, you will also get a prompt um, from your end. Thank you, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, moderator. Um, I'd like, I would like to now call the meeting to order and ask Christina to call the roll to establish a quorum. Good morning. Good morning. Wendy Strack. Uh, present public member. Dr. Annette Walker. Good morning, present public member. Eleanor Uribe. Present LCSW member. And we have a quorum. Thank you, Christina. Uh, board staff. Would you like to introduce yourself? Good morning, Christy Berger, Regulatory Analyst for the Board. Hi, Roseanne Helms, Legislative Manager for the Board. Good morning, Steve Sodergren, Executive Officer for the Board. Uh, Sabina Knight, Legal Counsel for the Board. And good morning, Marlon McManus, Assistant Executive Officer. Thank you. Um, now's the time for the public to introduce themselves if they'd like. Um, this is voluntary. Uh, is there anyone in the audience that would like to introduce themselves? <laughs> Good morning, Ben Caldwell, MFT. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, the, our first agenda item is discussion and possible approval of the January 13th, 2023 committee meeting minutes. Uh, before I ask if any others wish to remove or edit any of the items on the consent calendar, I did want to note um, on page 3-2, uh, line 3, uh, it's the licensing committee we have on their telehealth. Yeah. Um, are there any other uh, edits needed for the committee? I, I think I had, I had commented just, I think there were three states that were looked at and I had also mentioned to include Texas. Okay. That means. Okay. Can we add that as well? Um, I have to let the minutes reflect what was actually said and not what was intended. So I can't I, make any of those changes okay. unless I go back and listen to see if you actually said that. I, I did say it, but. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, then we want, do we need a motion to approve uh, the minutes with as corrected. Sure. Um, and Dr. Walker, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as, I'm sorry. With the date of the meeting also. With the date of the meeting also. January 13th, 2023. Let's see. Yes, I see that with the date January 13th, 2023 and the note of the telehealth versus licensing committee. Okay, great. Thank you. Do I have a second? 
Eleanor Uribe, I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, Christina, take the vote. Wendy Strack? Yes. Dr. Annette Walker? Yes. Eleanor Uribe? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, the next item on our agenda is the overview of the purpose of the committee. Oh. 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 That's right. Are there any, I, sorry, I apologize. I did not ask if there was anyone online who wanted to introduce themselves. Who wasn't in the room? This is the moderator. I see a few hands that are up. I'm going to call on Kathy Atkins. I'm going to send a request to unmute your microphone. We do have the instructions on the screen for others if you would like to participate. Kathy, I've sent a request to unmute your microphone. Um, the California Association of Marriage and Family Therapists. Thanks for having me. Hi, this is Kathy. Did that work? I keep getting mixed. Uh... Yes, we were able to hear you. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Next, Leslie Liberman. I'm going to send a request to mute your microphone. You are muted, Leslie. are unmuted. You can also switch mics by clicking on the down facing arrow on the mute button and you have selection for microphone. You may have to select the other one to see if that one works. Thank you. Uh, presenter, co-moderator, put the instructions on the screen for you. Come right back to you, Leslie Lieberman. We will move on to Lisa Winnegar. I apologize if I mispronounced your last name. I sent a request to unmute your microphone. You are muted, Lisa. Hi there. The audio is a little choppy on my side, um, but this is Lisa Winnegar, APCC. Thank you. going to send a request to unmute Rebecca Gonzalez microphone. The National Association of Social Workers, California chapter. Thank you. And before we go right back to Lisa Lieberman, um, I muted the conference room line from HQ1. So please feel free to unmute yourselves. Um, when needed, that was causing the echoing or the distortion in the audio. So, Leslie Lieberman, I'm going to send a request to mute your microphone. See if it's working this time. You are unmuted, Leslie. Okay, Leslie, unfortunately, we cannot hear you. Um, you may want to log out and log back in again if you would like to make public comments. Make sure that microphone works, or you can try uh, the um, instructions, troubleshooting instructions on the screen. You can connect by calling in. Chair, how would you like me to proceed? And this is the moderator. Again, Chair, how would you like me to proceed? Moderator, are you able to hear me? 
Yes. Thank you. I believe HQ is muted. Right. I muted them from my end. There you go. They've unmuted themselves. Okay, Chair, how would you like me to proceed? I believe Leslie Lieberman logged out and will be logging in again. Okay. Thank you. Can you hear me okay now? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we'll we'll go ahead and check back in with them later uh, when they have a chance to reconnect. Okay. So we'll move on to item four, uh, the overview of the purpose of the committee. And Roseanne, would you like to provide us the overview? Yes, thank you. So the licensing committee was formed a couple of years ago to conduct uh, several in-depth discussions about potential changes that may need to be made or examined regarding the licensing process. So the last committee meeting that we had was back in January, and at that meeting we heard a presentation regarding behavioral health workforce challenges. We discussed the practices of pastoral counseling and life coaching, and we also discussed the creation of a workforce development action plan to guide the committee um, in, its, in its upcoming um, discussion topics. Uh, the committee thus far has, has um, had some successful legislation already. We, um, the 12 hour law and ethics course requirement for renewing registrants with a, a failing California law and ethics score, we kind of reworked that and, and got rid of that requirement and implemented a CE requirement instead. So that became law um, last year via AB 1759. And we have several other topics um, that, that are still on the agenda to be discussed in the future, um, as well as topics in our strategic plan. So we'll be working through those as the months progress. Are there any questions or discussion? Thank you, Roseanne. I'll turn to committee members if they have any questions or comments on the purpose. Okay, great. Uh, we'll go to members of the public. Do you have any comments? <laughs> and in the room, uh, moderator, do we have any uh, comments online? This is the moderator. The instructions are on the screen. Those who are online and would like to participate, click that question mark, type comments, send it to all panelists, or raise your hand by clicking on the outline of a hand next to your name or on the bottom center of your WebEx screen. At this time, I see no requests. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Um, seeing no comments, um, and it's just an overview, then we'll move on to item number five. A discussion and possible recommendation regarding the development of a consumer outreach document defining the board's professions. And Roseanne, I think we're back to you again on that. Thanks, Wendy. So yeah, at our last committee meeting at the licensing committee, the committee discussed creating an outreach document to help consumers better understand the types of mental health professionals that are available to them. Right now on our board's website, we have specific definitions using the scopes of practices for the four professions of board licenses, but it's right out of our statute. So it's very technical um, and there might be some better ways to, to communicate more clearly what each of our professionals uh, does as part of their as part of their day to day job. So there was a discussion about how what the what kind of outreach the board should do. Should should it be a document t tackling all type different types of mental health professionals that are out there, or should we just focus on our particular license types? And the committee decided that for the time being we should start by focusing just on our four license types. Um, and how do we better define those in a, in a manner that's clear and concise? So, um, and, and if we were to create such a document, then it could be used on our website and our social media. We could make maybe some brochures, um, so, and it, other agencies could use it as outreach if they chose as well. So the committee directed staff to work with the board's four professional associations to develop a comprehensive overview of each profession. So we asked each professional association to provide a description of their pro of their the profession they represent, including a brief description, uh, examples of clients they commonly see, such as couples, individuals, et cetera, examples of common work settings as a private practice, hospitals, government agencies, um, and what is the education level required for the profession. And so our, our stakeholders, our professional associations were immensely helpful in creating these documents, um, each of the four um, main professional associations provided an excellent overview, and so we thank them very, very much for their 
their work on that. Um, and we have incorporated into a sort of a master document um, that, that goes over a description of each of the four professions. And so that's shown in attachment A, and so that's what we would like to discuss today. Thank you, Roseanne. Um, any uh, questions or comments or feedback from committee members? Um, Dr. Walker. Yes, Dr. Walker, public board member. I'll just make a comment. I really appreciate the work that went into this thus far. I know we had a great conversation um, at the initial meeting on this topic. So what we're looking at right now is the work that is coming back to us that has been done over time. This is fantastic. Yes. That, okay. This is right. after collaborating with the stakeholders and they asking them to each provide um, some, some uh, write-up of their profession. Um, we kind of put it into a main document, so this is the result. Wonderful. Thank you. Just want to clarify. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, no, I also thought it was nice and succinct, and I think it will help other professions kind of recognize the differences and some common commonalities. <laughs> And I'd, I'd also like to kind of echo the fellow board members' comments, committee members' comments about it's, it's well done, it uses language that I think a lot of folks can understand, and, and even for students as they're coming into colleges and they're, you know, trying to understand the various options of how they could serve in the profession, um, this could be something that could be helpful to them to decide what direction they want to go. So thank you. And, and good work. So I think you need a motion for us to approve the document? There's the motion to recommend the board. Oh, okay. And then after you have a motion and a second, you can do it. Since it's an outreach document, do we need, I don't know that we need board direction. Um, I was just going to help with agendize. Put it on the board agenda. Just discussion and possible recommendation regarding the development. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. 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 Then um, I'll make a. Oh wait, no. Oh, actually, before I do that, yes. <laughs> We're gonna thank do you. Public comment. We'll and go to public comment, and uh, we'll start in here in the room. Good morning, Ben Caldwell, MST. Uh, appreciate the work of the uh, associations and board staff. This is, uh, I think, going to be helpful as opposed to more technical language. Uh, just one comment, and I know uh, Rebecca Gonzalez is on the line. Rebecca, don't kill me. Um, <laughs> Because I know that social workers have their title protection bill that is moving through the legislature right now. Because at present there is no title protection for the term social worker in and of itself, mm -hmm. I wonder whether the description of social worker should perhaps be tightened a little bit in its language to refer to a licensed clinical social worker consistently rather than just saying a social worker. Um, that's, I, I mean to stake no flag in the debate over that bill, um, but I'm, I'm particularly looking at the second paragraph saying that to be a social worker you have to hold these degrees and simply as a statement of fact, that's not accurate right now. There are plenty of people working as social workers who do not hold those particular degrees. Um, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is certainly debatable. Um, but I wonder whether that paragraph is going to create confusion. Um, and I will, I'll defer to Rebecca beyond that. Thank you. Okay, moderator, do we have any comments um, from the public online? This is the moderator. The Q&A is now open. Instructions are on the screen for your reference. If you would like to participate, click that question mark, type comment, or raise your hand by clicking that outline of a hand center command row or next to your name. We do have two individuals that would like to participate. I'm going to send a request to unmute. Atkins, Atkins sorry. I'm gonna set my timer to two minutes here. Hi everyone, this is Kathy Atkins from Camp. I just wanted to thank the board and the various associations and stakeholder input um, and the committee to make uh, this document. So um, just, Thank you for moving this forward. Thank you. Next individual, Rebecca Gonzalez, sending a request to mute your microphone. 
Hello, Rebecca Gonzalez with the National Association of Social Workers, California chapter. Also want to thank um, Roseanne for all the hard work you did in making sure this document happened and how important it is to have plain language for consumers. And as someone else noted, just people who are looking into going into the different professions. Um, I'll try not to kill you, Ben. Um, I think that in our view that it's appropriate to define social work because that's how the NASW defines social work and has always defined social work. And so it's how the profession defines itself. Um, I do realize it's not in statute right now in the state of California, but I felt it was appropriate because that is how the profession defines social workers. Thank you. There are no additional requests. Would you like me to close the Q&A feature? Yes, thank you, moderator. Um, Roseanne, I, I did notice in the other sections, we do refer to them as licensed educational psychologists, licensed marriage and family therapists, and licensed professional clinical counselors. So maybe even just for consistency, mm -hmm. we can do the same in, in that section as well. Yeah, I think social work is a little different because you have you have people with that use the social work title out out in the in the field um, that they may have a master's in social work that but they're not necessarily licensed and they still use the social worker versus clinical social worker title. But I think that, that I can go back with Rebecca and maybe we can make a couple of tweaks to that language um, just to, to make the distinction. Maybe we can reword it as somebody who's, um, we, can, we can kind of think about what, maybe a slightly different way to word that so to address Ben's point, but still, still dis discuss what a social worker typically is because there are people out there calling themselves that that are not licensed. Um, so we can what we can do is we can do that and then bring up back the edits to the committee. Does that work? Yeah. Do you need a motion from us on that then, or yeah, I think the motion would be to um, work with NASW California to adjust the language um, for social work and then um, bring back to committee for consideration in October. Okay. I will make Roseanne's motion. <laughs> <laughs> so moved. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Wonderful. Um, all right. Then I think we are ready for a vote. Christina? Give me one second. I'm just recording that before it goes away. <laughs> Wendy Strack? Yes. Dr. Annette Walker? Yes. Eleanor Uribe? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, we're on to item six, uh, discussion and possible recommendation regarding workforce development action plan. Um, and I believe we go to Steve on this one. That is me. Give Rosanna a break, finally. <laughs> um, so at our la in January 13th meeting for the licensing committee, we discussed about creating a workforce development plan that would focus on kind of three main efforts, looking at data that we currently have on our licensees, um, looking at how we can actually reduce barriers to in the licensure process and additionally looking at possible ways we can ha we can recruit and retain current licensees. Um, so kind of look, thinking about this and uh, pondering this, um, the one section I just said about recruiting, um, it came to realize that we really need to focus really on the licensing process. So recruitment, um, albeit is, is an important part of the whole process, really what our purview and, mandatory, and manda mandate is, is to look at the licensure process. So that's what we're kind of focusing on. Um, and that's what we have, you know, the possibility to do policy to actually change or, you know, better, better, what, better the licensing process. Um, so what we are bringing forward is kind of just a conceptual model, I guess. There's not a lot of meat right now. Um, we were discussing in the last January meeting and talking about establishing short-term goals, you know, kind of a medium goals and long-term goals. And what we're presenting here kind of laying out is really the short-term short goal that we want to present is looking at the environment, looking at the data, looking at the whole licensure process as a whole. Try to identify by looking at, by looking at the numbers, 
and some of the, you know, verbally by maybe um, talking to not only of our evaluators on what they see as that might be issues, but possibly talking to um, people going through the process, seeing where those barriers exist. Um, some of those things that we are, what we are going to, what would I like to bring to the meeting, additional meetings that we're going to have. Um, the first thing is looking at the licensure pathway and seeing how long it takes somebody to get through the process. And um, looking not only just how long it takes to get through the process, one of my concerns that I want to look at is how many people drop out? You know, that's kind of, and why they drop out. So I think the first part of that is pretty simple by looking at the data, we'd be able to pull those numbers. Um, the whys, uh, we'll have to do more investigation, but I think the first step in that process is to show you the numbers and look and see if there is a major problem there. Um, additionally, what we'd like to bring back to the committee is looking at the education requirements. For that is looking at how many people that were actually um, turning, that come in and apply and they don't have a qualifying degree and that um, cannot proceed even on that first step to gain licensure. And looking at if there's anything that, um, you know, we see as a barrier. I mean, we, there definitely needs to be educational requirements that we put in place to make sure that we have, you know, competent therapists out there, but at the same time, uh, we wanna make sure that we're not providing any unnecessary barriers to licensure in California. Some of the more mundane process things that uh, we might be looking at in the future too to bring back is just the application requirements and the, and the process we have within the board. Um, looking at um, a lot of this stuff with the internal and the processes, we, we're currently consistently looking at ways to better, you know, the process for an applicant. Um, that should be simple to bring back kind of what we're currently working on and um, looking at what we can do in the future. And additionally, we do have, we're, we've been working with the Organizational Improvement Office of DCA to do a full scope review of our processes to see where we could actually make improvements. So I think we might bring that specifically to this committee to look at too. And the big thing on there, examinations. <laughs> so as we know, there's a lot of discussions around examinations right now. Um, and definitely looking at just, I mean, the simple part of that is just looking at pass rates, looking at, you know, school pass rates, seeing if there's any sort of, uh, any sort of, um, you know, things that raise alarm. Um, but, so that's one of the things we can look at really easily, school pass rates and such. Um, additionally, we already kind of, we're already working with the Office of Professional Examination Services to possibly collect some demographic data on our licensees, since we know that um, ASWB for our LCSWs, they're doing that. Um, we're thinking um, we are in the process of looking at that, collecting the demographic data, um, a voluntary demographic data. So, so I mean, the long-term report, the long-term goal for this then would be to really get this, get this data, present reports to you so that we can kind of start identifying areas that we think we could have um, a positive effect on, you know, policy making or if there's changes that need to be, to be made. Um, we've already been talking to some um, stakeholders about some of their ideas, so I think we'll bring those back too and maybe even invite some other stakeholders to make presentations on what they think. Um, additionally, there's a lot of information out there now on this, so uh, be warned, I might have a lot of reading assignments for you. <laughs> so. Uh, so that's kind of what we're looking at right now. And I think for the next one, um, we're collecting some exam data. We're doing some reports on that. I think what for the next, additionally, there's just looking at our um, license population and what that looks like. Um, the basic demographics that we can collect right now with, with our current system would be um, the age of a licensee and possibly where they're located, although that's it's determined by where their address of record is. It's not necessarily, it might not be a great indicator, but we could come up with some reports on that, which we could present to start the conversation. Um, what I can kind of garner out of this is we, we would present reports and then there might be additional data that, that might 
kind of, uh, you know, pique your interest saying, oh, we should look into that more, and then we can go back and look at the data a little bit closer or do different reports. So it's a long process, but I think it's it's good for us to kind of look at that. We, we want to, uh, with the workforce shortages, well, that's one thing, too, I want to bring back to is where, um, why are there workforce shortages? Um, I just read a great article, which I definitely want, I think I will be presenting. <laughs> so, um, and unfortunately with the upstream factors, we, there's not a lot that we can do as a board, but at that point when we have somebody who wants to become licensed, we can actually look at that. So that's where our mandate is. So I think originally when I was looking at this, I wanted to solve the whole problems of all the everything. So it's like, no, we, we have to really look at our, what our mandate and our, what, where we are able to actually make policy changes. So mm. any questions? or comments or thoughts? Thank you. Um, a couple of things came to mind uh, as you were speaking, and one is we had a, a very um, active discussion at the board level when we had some maps that were presented to us. I think it was by the HCA. Yeah. yeah. And um, especially the, the geographic distribution of services, and there were some really clear regions of the state that were dramatically underserved. and so. As you're kind of talking about that, I think this, uh, you know, the geographic availability is is a, you know, something that that the board felt pretty strongly about, and then kind of underlying through all these, and I'm I'm sure um, my fellow board members will have let, uh, you know, want to talk about this more as well, is kind of underlying, not just how do we make sure we're meeting the needs of of the population and making sure there's enough therapists there to serve. But we want to make sure that that population of therapists um, is, you know, reflects the diversity of our state as well. So underlying all of these things, if there are particular barriers for different subgroups um, that maybe, you know, we need to take a look at some of these more, you know, direct issues and how can we have impact in that area as well. Um, those are just two things that quickly came to mind, but I will look to my committee members and Mm -hmm. See if anybody else has any thoughts. No, I, I think this is a uh, probably long overdue, <laughs> and um, I'm I'm looking forward to to hearing what comes out and just hopeful. I, I know there's a lot of research and you know hearing from the stakeholders, but you know it's a very complicated, right? So and it's deep rooted and it's going to probably take a lot of people coming together and trying to make you know, like you say, even the policy change to help um, improve, um, make it, you know, increase the amount of clinicians we have and, and access. So, um, you know, coming from the university before, I, you know, of course, I hope, you know, the students, the, you know, the people that we work with the service um, and, you know, the, there's the represent, representation from the different voices, so that's all. Thank you. Dr. Walker? Thank you, Wendy. Um, yeah, as you mentioned or alluded to, Steve, um, this is a, a big conversation, right? So when we look at the bigger picture, we know that other folks uh, are also concerned about the possible gaps that may exist, the barriers and obstacles. We're not the only ones with, the, with our eyes on this. So with that said, I'm wondering, are you working with other outside agencies or have they come to you? Um, with questions, concerns, um, support? Uh, yeah, we've had conversations with other stakeholders and other, and uh, we, we have had some, um, some proposals on what maybe we could do. And so we do actually, uh, Roseanne's been good in that and kind of making those connections. And so um, one of the, we definitely will continue that, yeah. Is that something that you could share with the committee? Um, sure. I don't have the information, but I will definitely. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, when you bring this item back, or as we continue with this conversation, I think it's important for people to know we're not operating in a vacuum. Oh, yeah. And we want, you know, to hopefully bring other folks to the table, let their voices be heard as well. So. And that's what I kind of look at. It's, it's uh, I know there already, there's already a couple probably stake, uh, one at least, but I'm sure there's a couple that would appreciate the opportunity to actually present to the to the committee, which I think we will actually coordinate. So I love it. Thank you. And then HKI, we the HKI um, is going to be a really important in that uh, they do have the demographic data that they're collecting right now, although it's voluntary. 
um, I think they had like a, when they made the presentation, it was about a 60% um, uh, response rate. So it's pretty good. Um, but we'll definitely work with them too, or work. You said H. H. Uh, healthcare access and information. Thank you. That's what I wanted. Sorry, <laughs> California <laughs> Department of Healthcare. Yeah. So um, they're going to be kind of, and I, we might have an opportunity if there's a, if they have ability to talk about more the data because they did an overall data set kind of presentation. Yeah. Um, seeing if they can, if there's something more specific they're looking so at. So that may be a so. short term goal. Yeah, I mean, short term. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. Thank you for that. Okay. Hi. I just wanted to mention, not trying to toot my own horn, but um, one of the things that I work on as part of my job is our publications, our website, and our uh, licensing application packets. And we've been working um, really hard to try to communicate information that will help avoid uh, deficiencies in the licensing mm -hmm. process, really work on making sure the application instructions are extremely clear. We're still working on that. Um, but we have made some good changes working with the licensing evaluators. And then we did recently um, uh, release a publication called 10 Tips to a Smoother Licensing Process. So that's now up on our website. So I encourage people to look at that. We've been uh, working toward making changes to the website to help kind of bolster, you know, so people don't lose experience hours, you know, making changes to our FAQs as we identify them. So just want to make sure people know that that's ongoing and we're happy to have feedback if you know, from the public, from, you know, applicants on what things might, could be maybe clearer. It's a balance of providing too much text and directions versus like streamlined and readable. So um, always looking for feedback. And you, you should toot your own horn. Uh, you do a fantastic job of that. No, she's, it's incredible what she comes out with and how she's able to rework those forms and stuff. And I know that was, you did, there was a lot of changes to our forms in the last few months too of kind of uh, one of the things I believe was working on the kind of a easier pathway, like even instructions to show you, you know, depending on how you're coming into the board, where you go. And I know the website too, we're definitely going to be working on that, so. Thank you. I, oh, I go ahead, Rosie, I'm sorry. I can add to that, that yes, Christy is, um, that, that's one of the main ways that we communicate is our forms and our website. And when we do outreach, um, when I talk with various stakeholder groups, we have our MST consortiums, we have um, sort of some stakeholder groups that represent various mental health agencies. And a lot of, we are very receptive and Christy has been very receptive to feedback and working with people um, if there's a particular, and because of our licensing process, there's a lot of information on those forms and we try to make it as clear as possible, but sometimes we get Hey, you know this would be a lot. This this would help us if you if you um, put it worded it this way. And so Christy is um, great about taking that pass along information and um, you know connecting with them after the the meeting and 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 working that out and trying to get our forms to be the very best that they can be. Thank you, and we do have great staff here at BBS. So thank you all for. What you do, um, it, Christy. The uh, one question I had when you were speaking about um, it specifically on the the hours, the expiring hours. Do we reach out proactively to tell people that hours are expiring, or is that something that that they track on their own? They have, they track that on their own because we won't know that until they apply for licensure. You know, we oh, we're not we involved in. in that tracking. Yeah, so that's. But we, we do actually, we have started, um, that comes into the process where what we're concerned about on their hours when they come into the process is if they, if they drop out of the actual exam, pro if they don't take their exam within a year, then they drop out of the pathway they have to get back in, um, which is concerning if you have collected your hours ages ago because they're only valid for six years. So we have been working on a lot of more email notifications if we see somebody that's getting closer to their expiration on their exam expiration. Uh, we've been trying to reach out to them through email to say, you know, you might want to get going on that. So we are, it's um, a lot of different staff are working on a lot of different things. I think one of the overall um, kind of theme that we're working on though are using, we're getting the ability to do email alerts through the Breeze system and also just doing email alerts kind of in a more 
manual process by pulling reports and seeing, oh, let's send an email to these people. Um, so we are trying to get better at, you know, alerting them to these like main big events in their licensing process. So, and we continue to work on that. So. The, more, the more of that we can do, the better, because people have lots of things going on in their lives. And so if we can be helpful in just reminding them of, of deadlines, then we might be able to keep some people in that might otherwise fall out. But um, any other questions or comments? Mm -hmm. um, do you need action from us? Oh, on that? Uh, oh I'm sorry. The <laughs> I'm not trying to <laughs> to exclude. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. <laughs> uh, good morning, Ben Caldwell, MST, and just first of all, really grateful that you are pursuing this. I know that it's a, a large project to take on, but this represents data-driven policymaking, which is what uh, I think a, a lot of stakeholders, certainly I, I like to see from the BBS. Um, there is, because there is so much here, um, I appreciate uh, what Dr. Walker was saying about the importance of, of uh, gathering input from a broad range of perspectives, a lot of different kinds of data. And I know it's been a while, I know I'm dating myself here, but uh, back in 2010, uh, Sean O'Connor, who used to work for the board, did his master's thesis on why social workers and MFTs didn't get through the licensure process, why folks dropped out. And uh, while I know that that data is now quite a bit old, <laughs> um, it still provides, I think, some useful <clears throat> starting points conceptually for mm -hmm. what kinds of issues do we need to be looking at as potential explanations for why people aren't making it through to the end. Um, certainly demographic factors, but also things like work setting. Um, if I recall correctly, he, he had a finding along the lines of people who were working in public mental health or agency settings were more likely to get through to the end. That's interesting knowledge and might have some policy implications for how we work with folks who are in private practice settings. Um, certainly, uh, folks who are in caregiving roles and responsibilities. Uh, if I recall correctly, one of his other findings was that the, for each month that uh, an associate spent as the primary caregiver of a child, their odds of ever getting licensed decreased just a little bit. Hmm. And that has implications for policies around things like the six-year rule and what we might want to do with that. So uh, really appreciate moving this forward. Um, if I can be a resource at any point along the way, please make use of me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moderator, do we have anyone on WebEx wishing to participate? This is the moderator. The Q&A is now open. The instructions are on the screen for your reference. If you would like to participate, click that question mark inside of Square, type comments, send it to all panelists, or raise your hand by pressing the outline of a hand bottom center of your WebEx screen or next to your name. So I do have a, a, a few um, requests here. I'll be going in order, and I'll be setting my timer to two minutes here. Leslie Lieberman, I'm going to send a request to mute your microphone. You are unmuted. <clears throat> and Leslie, we aren't able to hear you. I see that you are able to type um, in the Q&A. Committee, is that an option? Can the request be submitted through the Q&A or um, should we? Can you read it though? Can you, are you able to read it? Oh yeah, there's no okay. there's a re there's a request only. So Leslie, we aren't able to hear you. If you would like, you can type your um, comment. Yes. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, and then we could read it. Yeah, the moderator would have to read yeah. it. We can't see it here, but yeah, if if um, that's possible, we can do that. Yes. Thank you. At this time, it was just a request. It says comments, and the next um, message that came in was, for some reason, my mic isn't connecting. Um, Leslie, we will come back if you would like to type your comment in the Q&A, um, and then we will come back and read that comment. Next is 
Kathy Atkins. I'm going to send a request to unmute your microphone. <clears throat> morning, Kathy Atkins from camp. Um, I want to ditto a little bit of what we heard. Just appreciation to the board and committees for um, tackling a lot of these issues. Um, there's quite a few and I think um, they're all important. And as each one um, comes to the top, you know, we'll um, do our stakeholder duty at that time, but we appreciate all of them. And um, we also encourage the committees and board to utilize the associations um, as you need, you know, we can get things out um, to our members. Um, if you ever need stakeholder input above and beyond the associations, but the um, providers themselves as um, as to these different topics, um, as well as sometimes we can recraft or um, get data that maybe um, is harder for the BBS or Again, I just wanted to put us out there as a resource for the board as you uh, go into these issues. And I, you know, and I know the asso other associations would feel the same, but just wanted to thank you. This is the moderator. I'm going next to Rebecca Gonzalez. I'm going to send a request to meet your microphone. Hello, Becca Gonzalez with the National Association of Social Workers, California chapter. I want to echo Kathy Atkins comments that we could also be here as a resource, but also want to thank the committee for this important work. Um, I think that it is there's widespread acknowledgement and the legislature has certainly had a lot of emphasis on the problems with um, the inadequate work mental health workforce. And so this is really important work and I appreciate the review of barriers that applicants face. Thank you. This is the moderator. I am going to read the message. Uh, Leslie Lieberman left in the Q and A. Um, due to her microphone not working. So my comment is too long, but pertains to the subsequent interns and the limitation created by only being able to work in private practice. This is a large reason for people dropping out and contributes to workforce shortages. It is a huge hardship on all of us, especially during a mental health crisis of such grand proportions. Please consider removing this limitation or reconsider the usefulness of this obstacle. Thank you. I meant only being able to work in nonprofit. So those are the messages that came in. And we do have one last um, request for public comment. Lisa, I'm going to send a request to mute your microphone. I'm setting my timer here for two minutes. Are there? You are in the Great. Thank you so much. So I'm in a I'm an APCC, and I feel like um, I just wanted to share a little bit of my personal experience, knowing that there are really good reasons for all of the laws and regulations in place in California. When we look at them individually, when we ex take the collective experience of them, it ends up being um, very challenging. I know everyone on this call realizes that for the associate to navigate that system. And um, I'm currently in a doctoral program <clears throat> online based out of Seattle. And I looked into the regulations for Washington State and I would have been fully licensed as a professional counselor in Washington State. They have similar regulations, not nearly as strict, but that would have happened last October. And currently I'm in limbo simply because the um, of an MBCC communication process of the uh, licensing exam into the BBS, which takes 60 days. There's a lot of examples of these delays that occur. So not only are the obstacles themselves of the requirements, but the length of time that it takes to navigate that system ends up becoming a real disadvantage because as an associate, I'm very limited on the uh, income that I can earn under supervision and going out on my own, I could in, increase my income significantly. I'm a very privileged white cisgender female and I'm able to take the time that it's needed. But in comparison to other states, 
that nine month or longer delay is such an impact on the actual earning potential of the associate. And when we talk about others who have less advantage, it's a very, very big deal. So it sounds like this entire organization is understanding that um, change needs to happen and they're interested in that. And I just want to also name the delays that can happen based on these processes at the BDS. Thank you so much for taking the comment. At this time, we don't have any additional requests for public comment. I did get, I did receive another um, comment in the Q and A, so I can attempt to uh, send a request to unmute that microphone. Uh, Ellen Lopez, I've sent a request to mute your mic. You have a public comment. Lopez, I work for Twin Town Treatment Centers. We are an intensive outpatient substance use disorder with a co-occurring mental health um, component. Uh, we work in the drug Medi-Cal system. We receive state funding. That funding uh, system and contract require that we are not able to profit from providing treatment to our beneficiaries. We are not a 501. Does that still put us in a qualifying position to host an associate who might be on their second number that requires to work for a not-for-profit? In order for them to get credit for their hours, that's been a little gray area of confusion. And thank you for your time and consideration of that question. That's that's actually a question of if they can contact the board directly to Steve or I. Um, Steve, is there a way the moderator can provide an email? Then we can we can answer that question. Yeah, moderator, um, you can present my email in the chat. If that's possible, or actually, can I? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can put that in the chat. Yeah, because that's a we can talk to them and and, and give them a direct answer to that question. Great, thank you, moderator. Yes. Are there any other comments? No, no further requests. Would you like me to close the Q and A feature? Yes, please. All right. Thank you. And I I know we. Um, benefit greatly from the participation of our stakeholder groups and our professional associations. So I'm sure throughout this process, um, we'll be working with them to help identify some of those issues as well. Um, are there any other comments after? I, I was just going to say, as I was reading through this, it reminded me of like, this looks like kind of like Bedden was saying, a project thesis or even dissertation, right? <laughs> So, I mean, they're so, so broad, but yeah, yeah. This, yeah, yeah we're up for a big challenge, but I'm sure we could do it. We have a lot to cover, but mm -hmm. we'll get there. Um, you need a motion from us on this? We did. Recommend staff to continue uh, working on additional reports to bring back to the next okay. committee. Okay, have in here. Oh, what did I say? Direct staff to continue to research and develop reports that will assist in constructing workforce development strategies. Mm, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody like to make that motion? I'll make it now. Second. Oh, I'll make the motion. Yeah, and I'll second that. Okay. Dr. Mocker seconds. Um, do we have any um, comments from the board or the public on the motion? Moderator, anybody uh, on WebEx that wishes to comment on the motion? This is the moderator. The Q&A is open. Members of the public, if you would like to participate. Click on the question mark, type comments into all panelists, or click on the outline of a hand. This time, no request. I can close the Q&A. Thank you. Um, Christine, I think we're ready for the vote. Wendy Strack? Yes. Dr. Annette Walker? Yes. Eleanor Uribe? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Now we're on to agenda item seven, suggestions for future agenda items. Um, do any uh, committee members have any additional items for future meetings? Seeing none. <laughs> does anybody 
in the room here have any suggestions for future agenda items? And moderator, do we have anybody on WebEx with suggestions for future agenda items? This is the moderator. The Q&A is open. The instructions will be on the screen. Click on the question mark inside of the square, typically right corner of your WebEx screen, or click on the outline of a hand, bottom center of your WebEx screen, or next to your name if your panelist list is open. If you would like to um, provide comment to this last agenda item. No requests. Would you like me to close the Q&A? Yes, thank you. Okay, moving on to item eight. I public have, comment. I for, have a, oh, sorry. Uh, public comments for items not on the agenda. Um, as a reminder, the board may not discuss or take action on any matter raised during the public comment section, except to decide whether to place um, the matter on the agenda of a future meeting. Do any board members have com comments for items not on the agenda? Mm, well, mine was actually, I don't know how to backtrack to seven because my, I had made a comment before, I think it was last meeting about possibly looking into mentoring for, you know, people going through the licensing process. And I, I guess it was maybe just kind of looking at what is out there, what can be done just to kind of help support. And I know um, supervisors are in a sense a mentor, but if there's anything else that could be a resource to people even connecting people. Okay. We'll have Steve is writing that down, so um, we'll add that to a future agenda. Um, or do any board members have comments for items not on the agenda? Okay. Do we have any uh, members of the public with comments for items not on the agenda in the room? Uh, moderator, do we have any one on WebEx with comments? This is the moderator. The Q&A is open. Instructions are on the screen. If you would like to participate, click on the question mark, type comments, send to all panelists, or click on the outline of a hand, which is located bottom center of your WebEx screen or next to your name in the panelist list. No requests received. Would you like me to close the Q&A? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay, and uh, our next item, agenda item is adjournment. So we moved through pretty good today. Um, thank you everyone for participating. Uh, as a reminder, our next board meeting will be August uh, 17th and 18th in Sacramento. Uh, we hope to see you again. And meeting is adjourned at 10.03.